<laughs> Just kidding. Okay, there we go. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the WMGSO Twitch channel. It's our first broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm your host, Sham Watermelon Farm, and today we are talking about the game Wild Arms with my guest, Ayla, and her arrangements of Into the Wilderness and Porte. Welcome, Ayla. Hello. 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 Okay. So let's get the game queued up here. Start. Uh, Start. Enter. enter. No, no, no. Controller. Enter. <coughs> Start. There you go. I will apologize ahead of time. Last week's unseasonably nice weather. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why are we so slow? Uh-oh. 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 I can fix this. <laughs> Good to start at the beginning, right? Okay, at the beginning. <coughs> Last week's unseasonably nice weather ultimately gave me a cold. So, tea and muffin, it is for me. <laughs> tea and muffin time. Welcome to the Tea and Muffin channel, where we talk about tea, muffin, and video game music. I also want to point out that this worked flawlessly about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and now has decided to break because Murphy is a powerful figure. In the world of technology. I'm just gonna restart you. Well, while we're waiting for the game to get queued up, can you give us a rundown of Wild Arms, the story, the, um, the basics of it? So Wild Arms is, uh, the, a very valiant attempt at a combination of a JRPG and a Western. You start out with three characters. That you play one by one at first, and then they all come together and create one party. Uh, Jack, Rudy, and Cecilia. They are the swordsman, the gunman, and the magic user. This is Into the Wilderness, actually, right now, if you want to let the cutscene roll sure, through. Yeah. Um, this is something that plays before every, every startup, because it's an old PlayStation 1 game. Uh, it shows what's happened pretty well. The, the world is kind of destroyed in some places because there's been a war between demons and humans. And the demons have been in hiding for many, many, many years. I think it's a thousand years. And humans have started to lose faith in something called the Guardians. They're basically like summons from, uh, they're basically like summons from uh, but they need the Guardian's power to help them fight the demons when the demons emerge again and start wrecking havoc on on the world. So, Tracy has already played through our first intro character, Jack, who's a treasure hunter. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hat. <laughs> I forget what you named Jack, but Rudy, a.k.a. Hat. <laughs> you know. Who Tracy is playing now. Well, I can do. There He's we go, that's better. A 15 year old boy who came to this village and he just does honest work and just wants to fit in, which is difficult when you have anime blue hair in the Wild West, but here we are. And, um, chicken. You can talk to the dog. I'll talk to the chicken. That oh. chicken is gonna turn into a shrew. <laughs> I'll take so, it. <laughs> um, yeah, the premise is basically these three characters are ultimately tasked with saving the world somehow, some way. And you learn things about all of them. And, um, I will admit that unlike many JRPGs, all three of the characters don't end up being mysteriously connected in their pasts, but uh, they have unique backstories, and um, I really like how it's a lighter JRPG. A lot of JRPGs are very anime, and they're very dark, and they're very teenage emo, for lack of a better term. <laughs> uh, and Wild Arms is, is very, very Western in the sense of, like, the U.S. A lot more lighthearted, even though mm -hmm. at times it does get very kind of dark and gory later on. And I can talk about that when we get to talk about Forte. Sure, sure. So, what inspired you to create an arrangement from this game? So, Into the Wilderness. Uh, it's it's sort of because it's, it's the title song. Um, uh, because it's the title song, me and my brothers just grew up listening to it, so that's why this game has a special place in my heart, is I, I played it with my brothers. The three of us would sit around playing this single-player game for hours and hours. It was my first original PlayStation game, and 
into the wilderness, you hear it every time you boot up the game, so it just has a, a nice place in your heart. And we would spend so much time watching the, watching the intro scene, and before we beat it, trying to figure out, like... I did it wrong thing. What'd you do? I hit Alt-Tab. One, two... CTL17 says, a JRPG isn't a JRPG unless it ends with teenagers using the power of friendship to kill God. See, and <laughs> Wild Arms is a really good example of teenagers using the power of friendship to kill the devil, basically. Um, it's complicated, but yeah. The enemies in Wild Arms are considered demons. That's the name of their, their race. They're the demon race. Um, they came from another planet to make this one their home, and Yada yada yada, and then, you know. Alright, let's turn the game audio down a bit. Let us know if that's a little better. And I'm sorry, I broke it. How do you do full screen? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to restart. No. I know. No. I know. No, no don't start another one. No. Nope. That's good. You can play it like that, though. It'll, it'll run. It's um, the window is gonna be a little weird, though. Yeah, I know. Sure. If you okay. want to restart it, Sorry, can we restart again? Yep. <laughs> but alright, everybody. Like I said, worked perfectly 20 minutes ago. But now that it knows you're all watching, it's yes. misbehaving like it a knows, toddler. It knows. We can also use safe states if you want to. Yay! Oh, yours. Okay, there we go. It's like we're actually playing on an original PlayStation. <laughs> it's <laughs> we just have to a little too restart. old. Yeah, it's a little. Alright. Uh, yes, um, I realize you said that I should not interact with the chat too much, but enter blank is my brother. What's up? How's it going? So, um, Balloon has, has reference, which, if we're playing for as long as I think, you may actually get to experience the fear of a red balloon, like me oh and my brother did. I'm excited. Be excited. It's, yeah. it's exciting. It's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> So, let's uh, get back to where we were before. Do you think you could uh, give us a little bit of your background just in music and what brought you to the orchestra? I volunteered to be the first because I'm not very musically inclined comparatively. I was in choir all through middle school and high school, but it was like the easy choir, the one you didn't have to audition for, the one that you just got credit for. Um, I learned like really how to sing once I got to college, uh, and then I've just picked stuff up from there. Don't forget you have bombs, you can blow that up. I, I can? Yeah, that's great. Um, so I, I'm just learning as I go. I don't know very much. I've never learned how to play an instrument. Tried learning how to play piano once and just got too busy for it, but I would love to know. I really want to learn how to play drums someday because my dad plays drums. But, uh, yeah, I'm a filthy casual, as they would say, <laughs> but, well, but when it comes to music. I'm just a singer, so these doing these arrangements have been a huge accomplishment for me because, you know, you have to get over the fact that you need to ask for help. Mm. And I needed to ask for help, for sure. Um, but they came out really well, and I'm really happy with them. So it's the first time I'm arranging for you. Yeah, Into the Wilderness was my first time arranging. Um, if you ever need a good impetus, like a good um, motivator, to, to get something done, give yourself a month to do it, and only a month, because I only had a Sibelius <laughs> trial for 30 days, and I managed to get Into the Wilderness done in 30 days. Do you think you could talk a little bit about Sibelius itself? Because I think um, outside of the world of arrangers and music theorists and teachers, there's probably not a lot of knowledge as far as the tools that are available, say, if you out there wanted to arrange your own video game music, what kind of tools would you use? So I use Sibelius, which like I said has a 30 day free trial right now <laughs> of Sibelius 8, but it's um, it's a really robust and sometimes not very straightforward, but otherwise really powerful piece of software that um, you get to visualize the staff in front of you and, and all the parts, and you literally just click on like notes and place them on the page and move them around and 
it um it's really powerful because it can do a lot of stuff for you one of the best benefits it has is that you can move the transport back and hit play and it will play a midi mm. version of the song that you're arranging whatever you put on that page it will play it doesn't sound great unless you purchase very very expensive library <laughs> uh orchestra sounds or, or band sounds but um it, it gets the job done in a pinch um it's they recently started allowing you to buy it on a month like pay for a monthly subscription where if you're not using it for four months you don't have to pay for it for four months and then you can automatically reactivate it that's relatively new since they were bought out by avid but um i strongly recommend it um Especially for somebody like me who's very visual and not very music theory oriented. Um, my, uh, my partner in, in writing Porte, she used to use a freeware program called Lilypond. So if you're familiar with LaTeX or any engineering, like, equation processing programs, you'll be fine with LaTeX. <laughs> I'm not. So it's free, but it's kind of a pain to use, in my opinion. So she's just now learning how to use Sid, so I recommend when you do hers to ask her about the differences between the two. <laughs> so as far as the process that you went to approaching this arrangement, it was using the tools in Sibelius to, note by note, give you a visual representation of what it looked like, mm -hmm. and then just going from there. Yep. A lot of people say, well, how do you arrange for this stuff? And you'll hear this from the other arrangers, too. Well, how do you do it? When you're not, when you don't have a picture of it in your head, if you're not an instrumentalist and you don't, if you can't really visualize the staff ahead of time in your brain, which plenty of people can do, and I very, very much admire them for it. They're really amazing. Um, I can't do that. So it's literally sit there and replay the note and then hit play on the MIDI <laughs> thing until it sounds about right. And then, of course, you know, you get somebody who knows what they're doing, look at it, and go, oh, well, you're three actives off, that's why it sounds weird, and you go, ah. Um, but it, it's that tedious, it's note by note, and eventually you just get into the flow of things, and you have to trust that there's technically no wrong answers. There, there are no wrong answers, so you just sit there, and if it sounds ridiculous to you, but it sounds right, then it's right, because you say so. Dang, you're the arranger, you've got the creative control over that, I suppose, at the end of the day. Exactly. So, so I, am I on the right track? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing okay. fine. You're doing fine. Unless <laughs> just going out somewhere. Yeah, you're, you're doing that's great. Good, that's good. All right. So, uh oh, double balloon. I'm a little low. I could punch. Oh, I got a uh, far. You're fine. Far They're weak. I yeah. got, can I use my far? Yeah. Wee. So, uh, my Ooh. brother will tell you that I, I recently begged and pleaded for him to uh, do some arrangements for us. And uh, he started on uh, something. I won't tell what it is because you know it's, he's still working Surprise. on it. But I was so excited because I was like, "No, no! I swear, you can do it. You know, <laughs> you and I have about you have a better musical background than I do because he even knows how to play guitar." Hey. Um, so yeah, I, I I've been begging him to do it, and he might be having an arrangement for us at some point. So you know, um, I'm excited. What's the bomb? Bomb? Mm -hmm. Bomb? Square. Okay. <laughs> or, you know, what would be square if you were using a PlayStation controller? Ah! I don't know! I did it. It won't hurt you. Okay. <laughs> How's the sound, by the way? Yeah, so we um, we turned it down some. If it still needs adjusting, please give us a shout as we fight this That's so bomb. avocado beast. It's a little, I always thought it was a tiny little, a little lizard. <laughs> The, the top of it, though, looks like a, a very overripe avocado, so it's new name is Avocado Beast. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that's okay, everybody. I won't argue. <laughs> I do recommend when you get out, though, using a uh, heel yes. you just acquired. Uh, that that, that would sounds be good to me. Triangle. Huh? There you go. In, in this bag? Uh huh. This bag has hey, a power hey. apple. I've got a lot of heel berries. You can eat the power apple if you like. It will give you power. Oh, I, I think I just said, oh no, I have the heel berry, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I ate the heel berry, I'm back in black, and let's keep exploring this cave. Super cool, man. So as far as Into the Wilderness itself, I think you could talk about the instrumentation that you chose, and 
we ended up performing it as a small ensemble piece, and for those of you who haven't been to our shows, we have arrangements that are made for the full orchestra, so for 60 plus instrumentalists and choir, and then we also have pieces for small ensemble, and those will be four or five just small groups to do a piece as opposed to the full ensemble. And so for Into the Wilderness, I think we had like eight total. It was a, it was more than one. So, <laughs> the, uh, so before I really started listening to it, it became, um, I knew there's a violin. I knew there was a whistle. Mm. I don't know if, if you guys who are watching actually heard the, the intro, but Into the Wilderness, is, the melody is done by a whistle. And I don't mean like the instrument, I mean a, a person whistling. Um, there uh, is a flute, there's some drums, and a bass line, I think. Um, I think that's... Oh, that's right. The, the small percussion. So there's a yes. triangle, and there's a Ever shaker <laughs> that Tracy played in the performance. She was very enthusiastic <laughs> with the shaker. Um, so... It was all that, and I realized while I was doing it that there's there's horns in it, mm. and I actually really want to go back, because when I did the arrangement, again, I only had 30 days before my trial ran out, and I, <laughs> I didn't have the money to, to subscribe yet to, to purchase it, so um, I did all of the instruments I just listed except for the horns, mm -hmm. and it turns out there are some other woodwind instruments in there that I just hadn't picked out mm -hmm. um, after the fact, so we did... You know, two violins, uh, I think it was one flute, some of the percussion, um, and I found out that one of our one of our violists, Victor, is a very good whistler. So he he did a performance of Proto Man's whistle where it was just him and a like a microphone, I think. Yeah. Well, it was him oh, and was a that? microphone and a piano. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, right. and he just whistled into the like it was so cool, and I was like, I know. I can do Into the Wilderness now, and that was part of the impetus for me to actually do it, because I was like, Victor, I have something for you, <laughs> and you're not going to be playing a string instrument in it. Um, but I really want to rework it to make it a full ensemble piece, because it could be. It could definitely sure. be a full ensemble piece, and it would have the horns, because there's this part in Into the Wilderness where the horns are like, da -da -da -da! it was very exciting and very, you know, grandiose in the moment, and, and I... I was happy with how Into the Wilderness performed because mm -hmm. we did it in a in the chapel. Mm -hmm. um, we did this uh, in the sanctuary at, at Living Faith. Yes, and it, it reverberated really well even without the horns. Cool. I chose not to put them in in the first place because I was worried they would overpower the violins. But if I'm going to rewrite it, I don't think they would have. First of all, second of all, if I rewrite it, the horns are definitely going back in. So that, that was is really cool. How I decided to do all of that. So as far as picking the instruments you chose, just listen closely to this, this, the piece itself, mm -hmm. and then thought, okay, that's the violin, that's this, that's that. So it's, I guess with the PlayStation, that's when we could kind of start, all right, this is the actual instrument you're trying to approximate. Yeah, like, and versus, if, you, if you get the soundtrack, you know what the composer was going after. You know? Yes. Michiko Noruke was able to, if not use real instruments, I don't think she used real instruments, but she was able to know, use the, the digital instruments or the approximation of what it was supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. So, props to Michiko Noruke. Sure. Yeah, it's something we probably wouldn't be able to do if this were a game on SNES or earlier consoles yeah, when all uh, we had was MIDI. <laughs> I would talk to some of the other arrangers about that, because the sure. history of, of chiptunes, as we call them now, is right. very rich mm -hmm. and very neat, but the PlayStation was the first time we could really have enough mm -hmm. space on a disc to yes. to put the music they wanted in. Um, I think I had to get really creative with the Super Nintendo, and they did successfully. Mm. So. Uh, but that's because Into the Wilderness was a straight transcription, or, you know, minus the horns and the, the extra woodwinds. Yes. Um, but uh, I, when I do the full ensemble piece, I really do want it to be a... a straight transcription because I mm -hmm. want to share that song unchanged to me right. is perfect. It doesn't need anything else. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a decent length too. It's not you know it's not too short and it's not too long. It's right, right. A nice length to feel, you know, really to get the whole emotional spectrum out of it. Mm -hmm. But um with Porte, Porte was made up of two songs. Yes. And if we had done just a tra straight transcription of both of them, there would have been this spot where they met that would have just been a super abrupt change because both of those songs um, 
Forte is made up of two songs from the game, Bringing It Back to Soil and Demon's Castle, <clears throat> which I don't even think Demon's Castle was on the soundtrack, but um, Bringing It Back to Soil kind of does this, it's very soft, and then it builds up and builds up, and then mm -hmm. it comes back down at the end. So that's a good song on its own, but it's only like a couple of, it's like a minute. Right. Demon's Castle starts really strong and then ends really strong. It's like just, you know, straight. So we knew that we had to create something to yes. combine the two of them. Um, so that was not a straight transcription. Zeynep mm -hmm. wanted to, um, I love telling this story. <laughs> she originally wanted us to make it, bringing it back to soil, does this. And she wanted to put Demon's Castle in there so that it would be like a big roller coaster and then it would come back down and end with the rest of bringing it back to soil. Mm -hmm. You know, so it would be soft and then build up, build up, and then it would be Demon's Castle, which is loud and, and big and, you know, oh, and then it would, would fall back down and, and calm back down with the end. Um, and I said, okay, okay, all right, we, we could do that. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me throw this idea at you. We could do Bring It Back to Soil, where, where it does its little little thing. And then we could do Demon's Castle and end really, really excited and loud and violent. And it would be great, because it's, it's it's acapella with percussion. I guess that... That's a thing. I guess that then means it's not technically acapella, but you know what I mean. Right, right. Um, and she looked at me and she went, That's insane. Let's do it. And I went, Yes! Because the choir never gets to be violent we never get to be loud and exciting when we're by ourselves Can't all of confirm. all of the other choir pieces are very oh you know angelic or quiet and soft and slow and beautiful <laughs> but they're never angry mm. so um i told her that was my reasoning for it i was like hear me out i really want us to be able to end and have our voices and the percussion just ring out you know and everybody's just like stunned because we just got way violent mm. and, and excited and angry um it's made up of a war chant, right? So it 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 came out wonderfully, but that did mean that we had to write something for the middle of it. And Zainab took took something she made. She pulled it out of her head because she did all the choir parts. I only did the percussion parts, mm -hmm. and uh, she pulled this choir thing out of her head, and it it's gorgeous. Uh, so. If you ask her about that when she's on the stream, just a little bit, she has a very eloquent way of describing what it is, and I couldn't reiterate it, but it's beautiful. It's this beautiful classical mm. choir sound, and um, I couldn't have asked for a better partner to do that with. So she made a whole minute of that song her own. So as far as the structure, then, of Porte versus Into the Wilderness, Into the Wilderness has a pretty simple... Like A, B, A, C, A, B kind of set up. So Basically, like we're going yeah. up like statement of the melody and then the rest of the instruments come in, and then we have our bridge, and then final statement of the melody. And Porte, not quite. <laughs> right. Right. Porte itself goes more of a we have our statement of the melody, a very weird things happening tonally. We start getting a little off the rails rhythmically. And then an abrupt stop. And then not quite a bridge, but more of an interlude itself. And then back to the main melody, and then another abrupt stop. Yes, because, like I said, it ends with Demon's Castle, which is bookended by abrupt yes. stops. So she had to write something that ended bringing it back to soil, which, which um, already ends very, very quiet and pretty. And she had to bridge that gap, because... Those two songs, even when you put them together end to end, only came out to like a minute and a half. Because mm. uh, they're very short songs on their own. They occur during cutscenes, during important cutscenes during the game. And her whole minute of, of original composition or, or rearrangement was very, very classic, very church like. Mm -hmm. um, but then when she ended that, she had to do it in a way that kind of came down quietly again and, and I wrote some percussion in there to sort of just be a build up of, of uh, rhythmic percussive beats to sort of be like okay we're calm now and then your heart starts beating faster and you're like uh oh uh oh uh oh <laughs> something's happening something's happening and finally it builds up and then bam Demon's Castle starts right right um, and it, it's it worked out so well. I was so happy. It was the first time I ever wrote anything of my own, even though it was only like four bars of percussion. 
Gotcha. I made it up. Yay! So really quick, do I put the holy symbol here? Uh, no, you just, okay, um, just hit, uh, 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 one of the buttons. One Square, of the buttons. I think? No. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh a mystic light. A... I see. Yes, I would like to record my journey. And Karaka says, I appreciate being violent, <laughs> and I'm sure we all do on some level, being players in video games. It's cathartic. Hi, Joe. Hello. Some gifts. Lunchtime. Yeah, gifts. I assumed the pentagram was on the floor. I thought, oh, that looks like a place for a holy symbol. But no, I guess I can just, you know, show The holy up. symbol cures a curse. I see. I, I don't see. know if you got cursed during your visit not to yet. the very cave. There You've made it this far. You're probably not going to get cursed. Um, well, but it's a bat that flies around looking. your head, and it makes you get into more battles than you would normally. Oh, bummer. I know Oops, it's not sorry. safe here. I've got to get those berries for my wounded father. Oh, well, luckily I've got bombs in my pocket, and I'm going to go straight ahead and get those berries for your wounded father. Oh, it's spooky in here. Ah, yes, yeah, so part of the plot of the game. Um, like I started saying, Rudy is, is a newcomer. There's a chest right there. Rudy's a newcomer to the town, and... And he really cares about the people here, and he's gonna go help them. And so Tony, the child that you just talked to, went missing. <gasps> oh no, he went uh, missing to the berry cave, even though it's forbidden. Oh no, why did he go there? Because there's a magic berry here that can cure his father's illness. Ah, uh -huh. and now we're about to see the consequences of going to places that people say are forbidden. Oh, uh huh. Oh, uh huh. Oh, the berries faintly glitter. <laughs> How do you faintly glitter? That's what I would like to know. All right, we got that, and now I'm assuming someone's going to be very upset. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Oh, that 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 looks like it's important. Uh oh, scary. <laughs> Look what you did! Oh no! I Look what you did! I My god, this uh, earthquake stretches the whole world <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, the whole town is here. And the dog. Mom. Why do you always cause so much trouble? I don't know. Man. Oh, we gotta heal father's wounds. Yeah, I guess we're okay. I don't know what the earthquake is all about. You tell me, I'm a newcomer. Always told you not to come here. You're safe. That's all that matters. Let's go home. Well, I'm not gonna. You make, were already there. I'm Wait. not gonna make Tracy find out if it's possible to beat the boss without using the hand cannon. <laughs> I strongly recommend using the hand cannon to fight this boss. Noted. <laughs> Is the dog going to fight with me? No. What? I don't get a dog buddy. No. But there's a dog right next to no, me. No, but don't you remember you played through Jack already? He has a hand pan. Oh, I see. I see. So uh, if you okay. go up, oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 no, 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 Eight. Oh no, I just used my, my, my pointy stick there just for a second. Alright. Rotten breath! Oh gosh. Oh, ew. Ew, that was gross. That was gross. But brother, the plutonium. The plutonium must flow. <laughs> we have a, an inside joke about how Star Trek, the all of the ships run, they, they need to run on plutonium. <laughs> otherwise, it comes from one planet full of worms. Otherwise, nothing else would happen. <laughs> All right, let's keep going, let's keep going. Oh my, that, this rotten breath is really rotten. That is an inordinate amount of cheese. Please excuse me while I eat my lunch. Also, I recommend healing on your next turn. You got it, boss. All right, uh, is that this ham here? No. For item, or? I so that's your action. Oh, oh, I understand, okay. Up is equipping. And then there's the bag. Yeah. That's weird, you have to hold it, I don't Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
But yes, we are keeping that in the chat CTL, but we're playing at the same time. So definitely, we'll see your stuff, don't worry. I'm watching you. We got our eye on you. And now we're punching, and it's pretty great. Do you see the amount of cheese that's on here? I mean... <laughs> you want a lot of cheese? <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I just didn't expect to be eating just cheese for lunch. Cheese is a calorie dense food that keeps it going throughout the day. And protein. It's true. Oh, we got up a level. Um, this man has fallen over. We <laughs> zombie. are. Zombie has fallen <laughs> over. Oh, sorry. The zombie has fallen over. You saved I... the town! I did! Oh, this is great. <laughs> Healing light from the berry reduces zombie to sludge. Well, what are we gonna do with the sludge? I'm just gonna leave it there, I guess? Nope, it disappeared on its own. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. That's nice that, you know, you have self-cleaning sludge. We don't want to, we need to, the environment is very important here. We just had an earthquake. We have to conserve our resources. Careful. I know that you, you possess the, <laughs> what did we name Jack? We named Jack Hat because we can. No, no, no. The arm is the type of uh, oh, weapon. Oh, okay. It stands for something. Hour. I knew I shouldn't have, but I looked through your stuff the other day. <laughs> The arm has brought doom to us all. We'll find the out. The dream chaser hat has cursed us all. <laughs> oh no, it's not. No, it wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. Be quiet, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for saving the boy, but you opened the forbidden path and put us all in danger. You also possess an arm. Unlike the rest of us who only possess arms. That's, that's true. Arm. Is that? Are you supposed to pronounce it a special way or just arm? No, it's arm. Or it stands it like, for maybe Judd. Do you agree? what? No, I don't agree. <laughs> Brother, what does arm stand for? We must judge you. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, I have no choice. They're gonna make you agree to your own discrimination. <laughs> we have to get back to the village. All right, so now I'm on trial. It seems. Yep. For trying to save a wounded man. What justice is this? The boy brought a terrible omen to the village. We must do something. He's just a dream chaser. He might sound cruel, but he may bring harm upon us all. So nobody trusts me, even though I beat the demon who turned to sludge. That was reusable as fuel, but it disappeared, so we're not going to worry about it too There's much. a reason this village yeah. is poor. <laughs> they don't recognize their opportunities. Oh, man, they, they, you could just, you could, you know, capitalize on all the sludge from the zombies that just, you know, are there. Yeah, but because they had banned arms, they could never beat the zombies. Oh. It's a lot of cause and effect mm, here. Economics. Okay, there's a bed. Can I save nope. here? No, okay. Well, you gotta go down to the parry. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right, yes. No excessive use of caps allowed. Alright, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Just a little bit of both, sir. Were you eavesdropping, hat? And then you know what we've decided. I must ask you to pack your things and leaves, and please don't come back. Where's the parrot? I have forgotten where the parrot is. The parrot lives outside. The parrot is outside. Well, okay. Oh, there he is. How can I miss such a colorful beast? So when you save and leave here, you'll get to see the other characters, and we'll get to find out what else we named Jack. <laughs> <sighs> So sadly, I don't know if we'll actually get to hear uh, either of the arrangements that were in Forte, because they happen during very uh, tense moments later on in the game, and because it is a JRPG, it uh, takes forever to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our first playthrough of this game was 55 hours, and that was with the three of us trying to figure it out, me and my brothers. Okay, I've got to get back. Thanks again. You're welcome, buddy. You are welcome. Melancholy intro text. Even though he used his skill to protect them, they rejected him out of fear. Within him is a power he never asked for. 
All right, so while we're going through this cutscene, what um in general, Ayla, draws you to video game music, just in general, would you say? It's a very good question. Yeah. Um, the really practical answer is that it just happens to be the music that I listen to a lot because I grew up playing a lot of games. I like it because it's contextual. Um, you know, a lot of people feel very strongly connected to movie soundtracks because of the, the movie's content. That's how I feel with a lot of games I play. Most of the Final Fantasies that I've played I have an emotional connection to, so the music invokes that. This, you know, brings back... Ah, you named Jack Poot. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, it's mostly that, but I think one of the best things about it is that you can't really call it a genre on its own. It's, mm. like, everything, you know? It's, a a any game can have any kind of music in it, so if you say, oh, it's video game music, it's okay, well, what, what genre is that, really? Um, jazz? Western music? <laughs> I mean, uh, Michiko no Yoke straight up lifted this theme from, uh, from Ennio Morricone's The Ecstasy of Gold. So, um, it can be anything. Uh, I think that's one of its best benefits, is that it can be anything. Mm. So the variety draws you to the genre in general, would you yeah. say? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Oh, so the items are shared amongst the party members, that's great. Yes. Cool. I'll give you a hint, you can, uh, go south. East. South, south? Southeast it is. Southeast. And Poseidon Reths asks, uh, do we need a copy of Wonderful 101? <laughs> no, we have our own. <laughs> okay, okay. But I think we might feature this, a uh, that game, in a future stream. If you have any ideas of other streams we can do, definitely send us a line at twitch at wmgso.org. We would love to hear from you. So let's head, I guess, is this southeast? southeast? No, southeast. So southeast. Oh. southeast. Other, the other east. The other the east. The other southeast. The Here other we southeast. Go. The other southeast. Bo -bo -bo. So you already went through Jack's stage. <laughs> Alright, so now, I guess I'm. Can I. Psycho crap! <laughs> oh, I guess you didn't use it when we <laughs> played the dry run. Psycho crap! <laughs> so I recommend when you get to the town, you should um, save there yes. and then switch over to Cecilia so you can run her level. Sure. And then you can work on getting all of them together to be yeah, happy friends. <laughs> Let me get on to the copy of Wonderful 101. But yeah, that would be a fun one to do. But yes, if you type in exclamation point schedule, you will see the upcoming broadcast we've got up. And maybe we'll do Wonderful 101 a little later. Ooh, Ooh there's a town, there's a town. I like that town. I mean, my brother's mis mispronounced this. It's really? <laughs> as as aldehyde, it's it's adelheid. Ad adelheid. It's not like formaldehyde, right? That's what we always call it. <laughs> it's not formaldehyde. Uh, can we go to formaldehyde next? I like that town a lot. We can try. <laughs> I don't know if you'll find it anywhere. <laughs> so how do I Oops. switch characters? Talk to the parrot and say change. Oh, I understand. Okay, change. Oh, that's neat. Oh, let me tell you about town music. Yeah? Actually, you won't get to hear that my favorite town music from this game is in a couple of different towns. It's called Port Town. Mm -hmm. So it's in all the towns that have ports. But, um, oh, it's got such great percussion. And it turns out it's, uh, it's just percussion, a uh, bass, guitar, and, um, bass guitar, and, uh, recorders. So I happened yeah. to send it to Zeynep, and I was like... <laughs> I sent it to Zeynep and Lee, and I was like, if you need something stuck in your head, feel free to listen to this. And they're like, yeah, we could do this. And I'm like, yes, you could. I'm not, but go for it. The Zeynep in particular has a lot, just a really gifted recorder player, so she's our go-to person whenever we think of someone who would play something on a recorder. Yep. Not a coincidence. Not at all. Porte is Latin uh, in some form or another for gates, which relates to the content of the two songs in Porte, Bring It Back to Soil and Demon's Castle, both have lyrics written by Michiko Noruke that refer to opening the gates, which all comes back to 
the demon's leader, which is Mother. That's literally her name. Mother. Creepy. And it's about opening the gates to the sky to let Mother take over or something ridiculous like that. So, because they sing about opening the gates, we named it Porte. Zainab said that originally it was supposed to be Portis or some, some other form of the Latin word. And I was like, no! Rewrite the letters! So re rewrite the lyrics so that Porte works. Because <laughs> I wanted it to be Porte so bad. And it is. So she did. So you have that freedom as an arranger. Yeah. To... It's your piece. and Because I guess there's there's no lyrics. Be in girl, this. potato. <laughs> Good job. It says girl, potato. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Continue. Oh, no, that's fine. Just So the process of adding lyrics was just finding words that fit the rhythm. And then you're saying that it was going to be called Portis, but then Porte, and then the whole thing had to be redone. Or something like that. That's really neat. I left Zainab up to do the extra mm -hmm. lyrics. Um, she rewrote the last set of lyrics in Demon's Castle just to mix it up, because otherwise you're repeating et solis arora paradisi portate ca mux ex or mm -hmm. like 50 times. Right, So right. she really just wanted to like change it up right. a little <laughs> so it wasn't the same thing the entire piece. So whatever it was she wrote, I had to ask her to rewrite that line. There were lyrics originally. Um, ha 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 Portato. 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 There were lyrics originally. Those, the majority of the lyrics in the piece are still, um, are from the, they're, they're transcribed is what I'm getting at. But Zeynep kept those for the part she wrote and then changed the lyrics for the last two passages. But Zeynep's really good at, at coming up with lyrics. I'm looking forward to her Mass Effect stream so she can talk about mm -hmm. how she wrote lyrics for a song that is literally ambient music. Right. <laughs> so as far as this, uh, switching, or rather focusing a bit more on Porte, mm -hmm. what made you choose it to do a, I guess like 90% acapella piece and percussion being added as well as opposed to a piece with instruments? So I, I primarily, I, I brought this up a little bit earlier, um, the, the choir never gets to be violent. All right. of the choir acapella pieces are pretty light voices or slow or sad or pretty, you know, they're just, they're all very nice and they're all very beautiful. All the acapella pieces we've gotten to do have been like that and they're mm -hmm. wonderful and I love that. But I really wanted to give, you know, I wanted to get away from church music yes. so much. So even though there's that little portion she wrote that really does sound like church music, it is bookended by this very passionate, very, it's it's a war chant. It, that's literally what the that portion of the, the song is, is titled. It's war chant part one and war chant part two. I just wanted the choir to be able to just be angry and be loud because you know the the horns get stuff like that all the time. Oh, sure. Let's be grandiose and da da da. <laughs> but the choirs, whenever it comes to an acapella piece, it's always very quiet. And I wanted so badly to give the, the choir the opportunity to just belt stuff out <laughs> very angrily. And the percussion was in the original piece, so I just got lucky that the sure. piece that I wanted to choose had only percussion and choir in it. Um, it sounded the best when we performed it in the same place we did Into the Wilderness. We performed it in the Sanctuary at Living Faith. And it it rang out beautifully in the in the Sanctuary space. That's um, really neat. Yeah. And Living Faith is a church in the Rockville area that we perform at and rehearse at as well. <laughs> and I will say the opportunity to perform what amounts to summoning demons yes. in a, yes. a holy place. And not only that, just the acoustics in Living Faith are all wood. And it's just, it's it's so totally different than performing, even in just a concert hall. It's really, really fascinating. Yeah, I, uh, I, that didn't occur to me until the very, and we had rehearsed it there too, and it didn't occur to me until the moment we're performing it. We're on stage. I'm singing the first two passages, and I'm like, looking at the, the, um, pastor, the pastor of the church, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, in my head, because I realized that we were summoning demons in her church, and I was like, no! I felt so bad. So, but, oh, it sounded so good. It's interesting you mentioned the 
I think the closest song I can think of where a choir gets the chance to just do the more percussive chanting style is probably One Winged Angel. Sort of, And yeah, even then, it's still, like, a very correct, very polite kind of... You're, you're an angry there. angel. You're not literally <laughs> summoning the demon. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is this is still... I mean, it's right in the title. It's still, like, a heavenly and ethereal kind of song. It's not a, hey, let's belt out as if we were at a football game and no one yeah. is trying to be heard above everybody yeah. else. But you gotta belt it out in good tone. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it will sound terrible. So, yeah, I, I was really happy I, that... Um, Within the Wilderness, it was, we desperately needed small ensemble arrangements. We didn't have any. We had no pool from which to pull from, so I had the additional uh, motivation. Not only did I only have 30 days to do it, but I really needed to do it so that we would have music um, to perform, period. Uh, but when it came to Porte, we already had a decent pool of music, and I was like, oh, I've been considering doing this for a little while, and I haven't really gotten down to it. It's kind of what I'm doing with, with the current arrangement I want to do. Uh, I'm just kind of sitting on it. I've got like four bars written, and then I'm just <laughs> too scared to sit back down and do it. But I made the beautiful uh, mistake of letting Zainab listen to the piece and say, oh yeah, this is a piece I, I'm, re I'm really looking forward to arranging. And she gave me the face. I got the... I got the <laughs> You're gonna do this, and I'm gonna make you do it, face. And it was that was how we did it. So that's that's one way to motivate yourself. If it's not yeah. your trial is almost up, it's friends who expect greatness from you. Yep, yep, it's true. And it, it, it was hard too because I'd never really arranged for percussion before, so I had to keep sending it to our percussion section leader and be like, "What did I screw up now?" <laughs> uh, and he's amazing. He was so patient. I'm I don't even know how much of it he may have rewritten, but I didn't even care, because he was so helpful and so willing to to correct any minor things, and he was like, we can even make it more interesting. He did that. He did that with End of the Wilderness. Because <laughs> you send all of your arrangements out mm. to the, the section leaders of the pieces that are, that are playing to say, hey, is this playable? Did I write some note that's physically impossible? Right? Can you tell me how to fix it? And he was like, oh yeah, this looks fine, but do you mind if I write a little more to make it more interesting to play? And I'm like, mm. go nuts, uh, you know, whatever, you know, as long as it doesn't change the sound of the piece, go for it. And he did, and I didn't even notice a change, but as long as he had, because it, it, it sounded so good, I didn't notice, it didn't change the sound of the piece mm. at all. Um, are you going to remember what those spells do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they may be important to me, just FYI. <laughs> So as far as the collaborative process, we start with the using Sibelius, having the visualization as best you can, mm -hmm. and then send it off to other musicians to take a look at it and offer feedback, yeah. and then sometimes they ask for it to be more complicated. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, usually they ask for it to be more simple, but um, <laughs> we, uh, CTL, don't get yourself banned, please. Um, we... In the case of Into the Wilderness, since it was just me, uh, while I had some trouble writing some stuff, I would I would say, hey, can you sit down with me while I write this, while mm. Sid is open? Tell me what I can do. Yes. Um, give me some, some hints. So I sat down with Joe to help me with the flute part. Mm. Um, Chris helped me with the piano, and, uh, not the piano, the guitar entirely, because I had no clue how to arrange for guitar. Um, so he, he basically wrote the guitar part for me, and that's why I credited Into the Wilderness as myself et al., because it, it, it <laughs> didn't feel right to say that I did it alone, because I didn't. Um, but when it came time to get people to look at it, because it was small ensemble and I knew who would be playing what part already, I just had them look at it. And if they were cool with it, they were cool with it. When it came time to do Porte, there were only two sections, mm -hmm. choir and percussion. Um, and when the percussion section leader looked at it, he told me what would work better. He, he gave me some, some things like, oh, this isn't really playable as written, but you can you can change it in this way, and then it'll have the same sound, but it will be written differently. Right, right. Um, there was a lot of stuff that, that had to do with um, making it read the way that it sounds, mm. because you he wanted it to match up with the choir close closely yes. enough. Like the 
Uh, there weren't they weren't triplets, but for the sake of conversation, I'll say they were triplets. Yes. Pretend you've got triplets, and you've got the choir doing a triplet here, and the percussion doing a triplet here. But the way that I had them written made it look like this, made it look like they weren't lined up. Mm. So he had me rewrite just so that visually, when you were reading it, the percussionists would be on the same beats or the correct, yes. al correctly aligned beats as the choir. <laughs> and because I'm not a percussionist, I had to take him for his word at all of that. I had to say, okay, look at this again. Does this look right? Because I don't, I didn't actually know sure, what I was sure. looking at. More experienced arrangers and musicians will not have that same problem because they'll know what they're looking at. But in my case, I had to really trust them. And then once I was done with it, you when you do a full ensemble arrangement, you will write what you want, you'll print it out, print all the parts out to PDF and yes. say, hey, section leaders, here's, mm -hmm. the th here's the piece. Please mark up what doesn't make sense or, or any notes you have, tell me and I will fix them. Mm -hmm. And then they get they go through our vetting process that says okay this is playable this yes. this fits it can go into our library and that's that's how we usually do it is the yeah. collaboration is between all the people who are like in charge of making sure that that sure. instrument <laughs> is playable in that line. Gotcha. It is difficult to use magic correctly. Do you know that? Mm, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's actually easier with small ensemble pieces sure. because a lot of the times it's like, oh, well, it's just me and my flute buddy. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't have to vet it by anyone because we can just sure, play it. Sure, sure. Yeah. So it seems like for small ensemble, there's the vetting happens when we try to give stuff to our librarian to make available for other people. But a lot of times with small ensemble, it's just... Hey, you want to do a thing? Okay. And then just sort of figure it out from there. And at least um, in my experience with small ensemble, there's a lot more playing by ear. Yeah. A lot more just memorizing what you hear and doing the best you can. <laughs> well, and that works out great. And I love that we have musicians who are willing and able to just pull that stuff out on the fly. Mm -hmm. I love that. It, I think it's allowed us to be a lot more uh, flexible. Yes. The hard part comes when we would really like to offer that piece to other people to play it, you know, like, if they have a real interest in doing it, and we have to look at Julius and go, can you write this down, please? Oh, yeah, Julius is our brilliant musician. Yes, he's wonderful. Nada. He said he was going to write something down once, and Zainab got the big eyes. She's like, what? <laughs> really? But he's, he's amazing. So, Julius, if you're watching, you know, thumbs up, man. <laughs> you the best. I'm gonna get some water. Go to Angie. Sure, sure. I don't know where Angie is. Angie's right there. That's Angie. Okay, I gotcha. Good timing. Take a look at this fireplace. This glowing fireplace. Fire, fire, fire. Responds to the power of the guardians. Teardrop has some connection to them. Push the tools button near the desk and use the teardrop. Okay. Oh, well, that, that sounds like a good bargain. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and do it for your pocket watch. Oh, yup. Oh, now it's hot. Oh, too hot. I can't touch it. It's gonna burn the table. Okay. <laughs> your teardrop crystal and guardian are linked in some way. The teardrop is the secret treasure of the... Not Ad... Adelaide? Ad... Ad... Adla. Adla. That's how I always <laughs> pronounced it, but we've never really been sure. <laughs> That's why the stone glowed. This will help so much in furthering my research. You can have my pocket watch. It's very useful. Yes, I'd agree. All right, so for... <laughs> now it's a present. <laughs> magic. It's how magic works. You can go back in time. You can reconstruct broken boxes and objects that are stuck in place. You can always be effective. This magic is worth repeating. All right, so for Potato, she in the same spot where my other bro had bombs, she has the teardrop. Yep. And to and use the pocket watch, I do the same menu as before? Mm -mm. No, okay. He'll hit start. Okay. I see, okay. That sounds good. So, who have you met that would benefit from using the pocket watch? Uh, there was a dude who didn't want to put the books away at the library. Let's uh, head back over to him. Her, I think. Her. It is an Abby <laughs> after all. Sorry. I think it's for. Oh, they, they did say the women. head chef? I don't know, I guess it doesn't matter. I suppose it's a little difficult to tell when everybody's head is a blob. True. Very true. Everyone's head is a blob. 
but Potato is color coded because she's pink. So. Because she's a princess. That's true. <laughs> That's not out there. Right there. There it is. With our head. Hey, bro. I'll go over to Sister Mary and make some excuses. I'll be right back. Yeah, you go do that. I'm counting on you, potato. okay, Potato? <laughs> okay, so... I hate to use magic. Oh, yeah. No, you do not hate to use magic for a purpose like this. This is exactly what magic is for. Have you even read Harry Potter, girl? One book still on the floor. Mysterious. Oh, oh no! The innocent one. Potato. <laughs> What? Oh my god. So this, this book is talking to me. What do I do? Just, just listen? I, the, 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 the book is talking. to tell you what to do. I don't, I don't want the book to talk to me anymore. Can it's I go gonna tell. It's going to tell you what to do. I have to go back to the chef. It's dinner time. Why? So you can eat all the hamburgers? Yeah. <laughs> the same voice is in the dream. What is the seal of the library? I wonder if it's located somewhere. Well, well we're in a lot. This isn't, this isn't the seal of the library? But we're in a library? No, this is the open library. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Magic's fun like that. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it. Magic is fun. Okay, let's head back around, I guess? Over here? Oh, that's right. I can't leave yet. But there's some other questing to do here, it looks like. You Hi. gotta find the sealed library in the, uh, in the Abbey. You're out of crash oh, oh. oh, I understand. Okay, so they gave me one before, and then I made mm -hmm. my Earth spell that I named Oof. Yes. So, because we played this when we were children, mm -hmm. um, my brothers and I, we, we, you know, it matched up because there's Jack, Rudy, and Cecilia, and there was me, you know, me, Matt, and Jake. Mm -hmm. And so, when because we were kids, we would, you know, play pretend that we were the characters. Mm -hmm. So it appears that our names are no longer Jack, Rudy, and Cecilia, but... Poot, hat, and potato. <laughs> uh, can I use my mat on the plants? They are immovable objects, it seems. I recommend talking to people. I, I, they might be yeah. knowledgeable about they, they wanted to know why they're not facing each other? Is that important? Mm, uh, maybe. Uh, no. I can tell you what to do if you yes. like. Yes. Okay, uh, there should be a switch on the back of the left-hand side statue. Okay. Which you find out from talking to somebody, and they're like, "There's a rumor." Rah, rah, rah. And they're like, "Why is there?" You a might, in fact, you might have to talk to that oh, person. Oh, to trigger it. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. But it's on oh, the back just... of that statue. Yeah, nothing's happening yet. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's one of the people in the classroom. Okay. But I actually don't remember. Next That's to the left. Without face off to the left. Uh, how about you? It's very beautiful. Nope, 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 nope. How about you? How about you fish? Yeah. I don't know if it really exists. Okay. Isn't that who we were just talking to? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if a book like the one you talked about. <laughs> You're welcome. Potato! <laughs> yes. It's not a dream. Not a dream. I thought you might know. I like to explain that uh, the large shadow, Rudy, is actually the main character of this JRPG because Rudy never talks, <laughs> but Jack and Cecilia do. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> ah, you are summoned to search for the sealed library. If you are the chosen one, you must do this on your own. I'll, I'll Some help you are, now, sister. Gosh, well, <laughs> destiny is hard. It is hard. So basically, just talk to everyone you find because I don't remember where they are. <laughs> Anybody here? How about over here? Maybe in here? Hi. No, I already talked to you like five times. Da, 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 the power of wind, the power of water. It's okay, she yeah. says don't talk to me. It's difficult to use magic correctly. You are my best student. Well, try, the, try the classroom all the way to the left. Alright, let's try there. And then if not, it might be somebody in the um the two walkways. There. Oh. That, that kind of stuff is loud of specialty. Well, okay, let's find that one. Oh yeah, she's in the bed. In the Okay. The the, the dorm room. Sure. 
Okay. So Michiko Naruke was the composer for the, for this and all of the Wild Arms games, and she's amazing. Um, it's often brought up that you know female composers really don't get the credit they deserve, mm -hmm. especially in Japan, because in a lot of Japanese games, not all of the Japanese games, but a lot of them, they're they're a team of people, so you don't actually know who right, right. who wrote the what. Um, so a lot of the credit gets, you know, dropped. But uh, I, I've always loved Michiko Noruke, and I didn't realize it was a woman because I don't sure. I don't speak Japanese, so I didn't realize that that was a female name, but apparently it is. And um, I was floored because I found out when I was like an older teenager, and I was. Uh -huh. I had one of those moments where representation matters, you know, where you're like, oh, one of the people who arranged right, my right. favorite music of all time is a woman? Holy crap! <laughs> I was so excited! I think that the only other female composer I can think of off the top of my head is um, Kolo Tony, and she does Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, yes. And um, that, that's, honestly, that's, I probably to look at a little more. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, there definitely is a, and I mean, not just in composers, there's, um, one of the Symphony of the Goddesses that came around a few years ago featured a female conductor from Ireland, right. and that was a um, just a really remarkable. Mm. Try talking to the people on uh, the walkways. You have to go back out. Okay. You'll talk to someone who says something like, "I hear there's a rumor that there's a switch on one of those statues. Gotcha. Is it true?" <laughs> and then you're like, "Let's go find out." One way to find out. Hello. You should ask. We I already asked it. Sister Mary. That was You're not helpful. No one is helpful here. I'm renaming this place the Unhelpful Abbey. Eh. I haven't been there long enough. Isn't that a rumor? Well, what about the woman standing behind the hamburger place? Oh, the chef! The chef! The chef! The chef! Forever. The chef! Yes. <laughs> the chef will know. The chef will know for sure. Chris was asking me what it is I like about the music for this game, and I don't really have an answer. Ask her. Uh, no. Ask everyone you talk to. There is something strange about the courtyard. For others, they are heavy as a mountain. Something about those statues is real spooky. Um, that'll be great whenever you find the person who tells you there's a switch. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. Oh, okay, there we go. There you go. I want to push them so bad! Well, so do we, so we can, you know, <laughs> get on our way, get out of the <laughs> unhelpful abbey. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's asking me what okay. it is I think that makes this music great. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't really have an answer. It's just really well done. Um, it, it's probably the only way in which they succeeded at making this a western. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Well, you're gonna get use out of your pocket watch. Oh, I, did, I, did, I did the wrong one. Well, remember, for some people, they oh. face each other. Oh, I'm gonna watch, watch. Square, square. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, okay, that's interesting. It takes you back to the thing. So, do you think that there are? elements of JRPGs music and Western music that do you think they have some commonalities? Let's see. I don't know. I don't know too many differences of, of Western music from... Oh, I'm just thinking, I mean, like, like, music for Westerns. Like, oh, music yeah. for Westerns. Yeah. Um, So, uh, the, the reason they were called westerns is because they were all made in Italy. Right. <laughs> um, and Michiko Noruki, I actually feel like, as much as I love it, she got really lazy. Mm. Now use the teardrop in the middle. Um, she got really lazy and just straight up stole the overworld theme from Ennio Morricone's The Ecstasy of Gold. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, they're not quite in place yet. I use it here. Yeah, that one's that one's fine. There you go. Now push the other one down. I broke it. I broke it. I really broke it. Oh, I got it. Push it back a little. Can I try? Sure. Now here's the real question. Would it be a JRPG 
without block whistles. Without block whistles. <laughs> oh no! Why you no go? Why why you no face each other in Satchel Van? This is what you do. <laughs> I swear. I've played this game my whole life. This is what you do. Uh, no. It's no. supposed to. Alright. Is the wrong one on the wrong thing? No, because you just moved them apart. Yeah. Mad help. Uh, time. Watch. Do the watch. Song of time. Song of time. Song of time. <laughs> <laughs> We got this, I swear. Okay, we can do it, we can do it. Okay. Um, one is like way bigger than the other though. I <laughs> just don't fit in the box. <laughs> do it. Okay. Okay. Oh, come on! <laughs> Thank you, Ava. Uh -huh. Cool, man. I don't know why that wasn't working, but <laughs> here we are. Um, well, I think westerns were really meant to evoke a sense of a sort of loneliness, you know, sort of adventure, because you're out in the wild west right, and right. whatnot. I don't know why Italians would know about that, but apparently they did. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. But uh, they really wrote for this to be, like, grandiose adventure, out discovering the unknown, mm -hmm. you know, out in the... Um, like, lawless frontier. Right, right. I don't think anything about JRPGs is meant to be lawless. Mm. I, like, they're all about world chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay. is slightly different than lawlessness. Lawlessness is like, you know, the rogue, the, mm. the vigilante. Well, I mean, you get a fair amount of that in kind of the archetypes of JRPGs, I think. Like, you, so you have, sometimes you have a gunslinger. Right, right yeah, exactly. <laughs> But you usually have somebody who's, you know, the outsider who comes to town and who messes up the order of things. Yeah. So I, I was talking to Chris about this earlier, too. They, um, they started with some things that were clearly supposed to be Western elements, mm -hmm. right? So you've got the, the guy who looks like he's supposed to be dressed like Clint Eastwood in, in, <laughs> in the, you know, the Man With No Name movies. Right, right. He's got, that's Jack, he's got the leather jacket, and he's got the, the attitude, but then he's a magic swordsman with a pet <laughs> rat. You know, what about that is, is Western, like, nothing. They took the archetype of the image and then let it go, and then they sure, split sure. up the gunslinger into being Rudy. He's got the gun, but, oh, it's, it's a magic gun. Mm. Like, Sure, sure, sure. You know, sure. like, it, it, they, they took a Western element and then they ran with it in, in JRPG territory, which is one of the things that makes Wild Arms unique. In the second one, they did really, really well with making the environment really Western. Mm -hmm. I don't think they succeeded too terribly in this one. Um, there's the town, the, the poor towns sure, kind of sure. do it. They have that, like, lonely poor town music that plays whenever in one of them. But otherwise, the rest of the towns aren't. They're all, like, fantasy castles and, yeah, and yeah. you know, like, wealthy port towns and all that. But, um, the second one, they really did, like, the full Monty on the environment. <laughs> you go into these towns and it's, like, even got the water tower in the middle, you know, like the water tower from Pipeville Goes West. You know what I mean? Like, they've got that feel, that look and feel, and then everything else is just JRPG up three notches. Gotcha. Um, also has really good music, um, but they did a little bit of a better job. Then the third one was just straight up caricature of westerns, like the the women have the cowhide dresses and the, the, the uh, frilly things, and it's I got stuck in that one. I never beat that. Gotcha. One. Um, I played it and then had to stop for school, and then I came back months later and had no clue where I went. <laughs> so I guess you could say, at least for me, there's similar. Like, you're on a journey, you know, you band together the people who may not have had anything to do with each other otherwise, and, and then united toward a common goal, yeah. and even if it's not kill God, it's usually some kind of, like, take down some kind of authority. Yeah, or... some world-saving yeah. thing. Hold on to that last box. You got it, boss. Do you want regret it? I, I, I regret it. Hit the button. Thing. We can come back to it, don't worry. It's okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. You can open the chests. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's there. They took the they took the ideas. Um, I think one of the things they took most is this idea of. Uh, I don't know where this idea comes from because it's kind of everywhere. You get the crazy inventor person, yeah. <laughs> right? That's in like everything. That's not that's not limited to JRPGs. It's right, everywhere. right. Um, but the woman in in this game who is like that, her name is Emma, and she's in charge of the excavation outside the town that, mm-hmm. that she's from. I named my cat after her because my cat is a bossy lady. So uh, Emma is very <laughs> bossy and, and in charge and important, and she's you know she's the tech. The, the tech person, she's the crazy inventor, basically, who who doesn't give any craps about uh, arms being taboo. She's like, oh no, we can make this work for us. So she does. And it's, she's great. So that's I like why you I, I named my cat after her. That's great. Because my cat was the first cat out of her box as a kitten. I was like, there we go. That's a bossy personality. <laughs> Don't hey. read all of these. Hello, Little humanity. Indeed. Thanks for coming to see our stream. Oh, yeah. So, the background of the war. Mm-hmm. Um, 1,000 years ago, if you if you don't hit start on the, uh, the title screen, if you wait, mm-hmm. it goes to a, a background story mm-hmm. about the queen. So, 1,000 years ago, there was this huge, horrible war that happened between the humans between the demons fighting against the humans and the elus or elves we, we never learned how to pronounce it it's elw oh it's not elves no, <laughs> just no. as soon as it's E-L- elw <laughs> no nope. we always called them the elu because we couldn't figure out a better way to say it between them and the and, and the guardians so it's the these three groups fighting against this demon race that has come to the planet and um there was a sword that, I forget what it's called, but there's this sword that, like, scarred the planet. And after you get the airship, you can see, like, it's this huge stretch of desert across the world. Um, and they, the Elu's guardians and humans, managed to take Mother's Heart. Mother's, the, mm-hmm. their leader, took Mother's Heart and split it into three guardian statues and put them on the, earl, on the world. Okay. But the other, the other, um... The other demons went into hiding, and what you're playing now is right as they're starting to come out of hiding, and be like, "We're gonna take over again. Try and stop us, ha ha ha!" And that's that's where you start from is preventing that. Oh, oh, right. Didn't need to do that. Hit you with my magic wand. I think I might die. <laughs> you might die. <laughs> okay. So as far as, oh, that's not good, this game music in general, do you think that there are some games that lend themselves to adaptation more than others do? Uh, as far as what goes? Or just um, game music in general, like when you're arranging. I mean, I think of, in general, Mario has been around for so long, its theme has been redone in so many different ways and we have like the jazz version and we have you know even like throughout the series just so many different variations on that basic mario theme and when i think of game music that i'm exhausted i just die you die (laughs) i just think of mario is a great one to sort of take a risk and maybe change it up a little bit but do you think um do you think wild arms suits itself to that kind of interpretation as well it might. Um, I have a theory that the older games tend to be more open to interpretation because they weren't written... Well, okay, let me rephrase. If they were written with a particular instrumentation in mind, it may have been more difficult then to get that sound out of the cartridge. Sure, sure. And the, and the, and the game console. So, of course it leaves more room open to interpretation unless you want to play chiptunes all the time. Right. Plenty of people do. <laughs> Um, so you can interpret it pretty much however you want. Oh, this would sound, this line would sound better as, as a string instrument or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a little, I don't think it's impossible because I think you should be able to interpret it in any way that you, you please, mm-hmm. but I think it's a little harder to kind of get in your mind how you want to reinterpret something with music that does have mm-hmm. certain instruments in mind. 
So, uh-huh. like, a more modern game, you're thinking, might be a little less accessible to doing a remix, so to speak, than something. Maybe at first. Mm-hmm. I feel like you might have to put your mind to it a little more, because mm-hmm. you have to say, okay, well, this is... This is a stringed instrument, but I really want to know what it would sound like as a horn. Right, right. Um, there's nothing stopping you from doing oh, sure, it, sure. but some people can have a harder time... Mm-hmm. Uh, breaking that up into being something different. But frankly, they've been doing that for all other kinds of genres of music and, and sure. cover bands and new interpretations, so it's certainly not impossible. Mm. And I guess you're, you're also <coughs> up against expectations of people who are listening as well. The yeah. Skyrim is, no, that's not how it's supposed to sound, kind of thing. Yeah, but then you can also go the other way around, where mm. if you have something that is written for a particular or- like orchestration, and somebody goes and is like, I want to know what this would sound like as a metal song. Sure, People sure. love that. Oh, yeah. You know, so so going the other way might even be easier than than not. Mm-hmm. So. so do you think that there's something about game music in particular that, like, uh, what you mentioned in the metal version, what I instantly thought of was the Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone on a seven-string electric guitar and how yep. fantastic it sounded. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So it's ex- exactly stuff like that. A lot of the older games, I think, have found a really strong thing in metal covers because sure, sure. oh, that's that's not nope. <laughs> because they were chip tunes in the first place. And right, they, right. There's a lot going on in them, so they automatically re- lend themselves well to metal songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and with with some of these, you have to get a little more creative with your rearrangements. Right, right. So just, I, I guess I'm wondering, it seems like gamers as a whole are open to hearing the music from games in particular done in a certain way or in a certain, like, oh no, no, I didn't mean to do that, no, no. <laughs> in a, um, a reinterpretation, so to speak. And do you think that just is because a lot of games that are considered, you know, beloved classics were limited? in the beginning, like, you know, we consider Chrono Trigger to have one of the best scores of all time, and yet when you listen to the music, it's, you know, it's was limited by the console at the time, mm-hmm. and so that in and of itself is just, oh, well, I'm so excited to hear Chrono Trigger because the only way I heard it previously was as, like, you in know, like, this, right, right. I think it's also, for, for a lot of us, maybe not for new listeners, I'd love to hear, uh, like, a... Well, okay, now I feel old. I'd love to hear a, a younger generation's take on that question because mm-hmm. um, that, 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 that. for a lot of us, it was just uh, the sense of, holy crap, somebody else out there knows this game, <laughs> and holy crap, somebody else out there like made this into something awesome. It was sort of the, the sense that you found a, t- a tiny piece of your community out there, even if you didn't know who did it. Sure, sure. Right? Whereas today, I don't know if that would be so true. You know, my... um. When I was a kid, my dad made me this whole MIDI album. I mean, there were hundreds of songs on it. A whole MIDI album of Final Fantasy IX music. <laughs> um, and I lost my my mind over oh it because, gosh. oh my god, like, people do this? This is amazing. <laughs> and, you know, that led, you know, stuff like that led right, to, right. like, MAGFest and led to us creating the mm-hmm. WMGSO and, and led to all this. So... I would be intrigued to know what a younger generation who sure. already has those resources and the internet available to yeah, them yeah. in that, what they think about it. Why are they interested in it? You know? Sure, sure. What What is unique and special for them? Because for me, it's more about suddenly finding a community you didn't think existed. <laughs> I am the eternal darkness. Come to me, innocent one. That's not Bring creepy. Bring me your inner light. Come to me, potato. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna do a thing I didn't do before, which is go back and, and save. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Oh, that's because I'm horribly lost already. Because we could do a save state. state. How, how do you get? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's see Jimmy, okay. I'm gonna cheat real quick here. Cheat. Save state. Do it in slot four. Show. Thumbs up. Oh crap. Oh, okay. Now it's playing music. Oh, there goes, the okay. thing. Yay! 
I didn't ruin it horribly. Or fan. Everybody's about a fan. What about cookies? We we don't mention cookies. No. But I guess we just did, so. Cool, man. There we go. That's not right at all. Go back to the plaque and back to do plaque. The, the thingy. Back to the plaque. Back to the plaque. The thingy. Back to the plaque. Back to the plaque. Oh, that's right. Okay. And then to the right. I will get some more water. Look, look. Take two of our... Oh, that's right. And take two of the seal of the library. Where I will use my, my great spells, boop and flame and heal, and I'm gonna get through this library, and it's gonna be great. A mysterious force, seal the door. Oh, luckily I also have a mysterious force. I will hold up and open the door. Okay. Wait, wait. wait. I slip those over here, I think. Yep. There, yes, there we are. If you ever get frustrated and need me. <laughs> to plow through anything, let me know. <laughs> no, the inner darkness is supposed to offer you cookies. That's right. You know, I, I think that would have been a much bigger incentive, but I guess Potato's motivations for the darkness don't need cookies. She just wants, you know, cool magic and stuff. Cookies are usually, you know, the extra little bonus. No, she wants hamburgers. Yeah. Apparently Cecilia's, uh, has, she has a reputation, I'm sorry, Potato has a reputation uh, in... The Abbey as being able to out eat the chef. In fact, when you first talk to the chef, he's like, "No, no, not you. Food's not ready yet." So no cookies. But... They, they could be the burger cookies. Ooh. <laughs> Those, that great Maryland specialty Ooh. of slab of chocolate frosting and cake. Boyga cookies. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, all right, so I go up here. Uh, boom. Yeah. But, but look at these jumping cones. Yes, but that's earth. Look at the jumping cones, Ayla. They're more susceptible to fire because <laughs> they're books. Oh, so we're going back Pokemon rules of combat, got it. No, okay. well, yes, because they use ice. <laughs> I see. No, 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 check later. This is another one of those games where when we would play it, we didn't know anything about, like, like offensive magic and offensive, like, or defensive anything. Right, right. So we'd be like... Lowers your defense, that's useless. <laughs> and then we'd get older and we'd be like, oh man, this game is so much easier yeah, now that we know how to use defensive magic. <laughs> <project." laughs> hmm. 12 ESP. So you are the president of our of our orchestra. So they tell so me. So they tell you. Do you think you could talk about the uh what um what are your motivations, and or just at least um, maybe the early days and creating it, and what it looks like so, being yeah, uh, the person who runs the show? You need to use the yes. stopwatch. Okay. Um, when I graduated college, I I just still wanted a place to, to sing and especially play game music because the one I was in was, in college was so it was. It was life-changing really because having a community where especially a unique community because when when i when i was in college people didn't have game orchestras you know the fact that you had video games live come by once a year was amazing mm -hmm. and it, it goes back to that whole like oh my god somebody else is in this community right. mentality so when you when you found out that video games live was coming by you're like oh my god but then they go away for a year um, and you can't go play with them because they're all professional musicians. It's the so, National Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> so unless you're in the NSO, you don't get to play with them. Oh, so when I graduated, I was like, you know, I I want my own. I want I want to stay in this, and if no one else is going to do it, then I will. And I I started putting together these really haphazard meetings because it was it was hard because we it was the very catch twenty two you know chicken and egg problem. Well, we want to start having rehearsals. People aren't going to join a group that doesn't have a lot of members, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you're not going to get a lot of members unless you can tell them where they're going to rehearse. <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> you're in this chicken and egg problem. So finally, um, uh, one of our, our founders helped us get rehearsal space uh, for, for free. It was with the, the church and their only, it was with Living Faith and their only 
uh, agreement was that we, we pass the hat every rehearsal. Uh, we decided not to do that because it is it, it takes a lot of time away from the rehearsal, and we were like, we'll just pay them instead. So <laughs> we'll just tell them that this is how much everybody gave in the hat every, you know. We didn't lie to them, but we were like, we're just going to give you the money for it. <laughs> what we felt was, was fair. And, um, it worked out really well because it meant that, that we could split the proceeds of our concerts there with them, and it just it works out for both of us because um, we get their exposure, which opens a lot of people who would never have listened to us otherwise, go up the stairs, um, get to hear our music. So we really do get to achieve our mission by performing there because most, you know, they, they've got, you know, re religious grandmas who, who would never think to play a video game or listen to music from a video game. They come hear us and they are very impressed. Or they get to bring their grandkids and their grand, you know, they get to share a moment with their grandkids. So that was a great start for us. We, you know, the, the pastor there has, is officially our fairy godmother. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> he blowed up. Uh, that And it was, it was wonderful, really, to have that, that push to help us start. But then we had the problem where we needed arrangements and we needed more musicians to fill out more spots. Like, you get the woodwinds fill up in two months. And then you keep getting woodwinds who want to play with you, and you're like, well, for balance reasons, we have a cap because you can't have, you know, 20 woodwinds and two violins. It doesn't balance. Um, and then we needed to find a conductor, uh, which we very nicely were able to do. And Nigel, uh, Nigel came to us and he was like, I don't play games. I'm not a gamer. I don't know anything about games. But I love community bands. And he said it just like that. We were like, why Why do you want to come conduct with us if you don't play games? And he goes, I love community bands. I think they're wonderful. He, uh, When he moved here from, from Britain, he, he didn't really know anyone. He didn't have a community. And he found it in music. Because he, he's a brass player. Brass, the Rockwell Brass Band conductor. So he, he found community in music. And like I said earlier, how game music is its own kind of community um he just wanted to help us foster that so we had our conductor we had our rehearsal space then we needed arrangements so we had people start working on new arrangements as soon as possible but it takes a long time to do arrangements so we had to borrow from uh from the college group for a short period of time um, but even now we have reached a point where we are able to perform solely WMGSO exclusive music, and that is so exciting mm. because it, it feels like we've really found our feet. We're really self-sufficient now, um, and yeah, we're we're very lucky to have a whole group of people who just, as a hobby, compose. Yes, <laughs> and, and arrange. The the kind of mentality it just it's mind-boggling to me. I I myself am a total novice when it comes to any kind of composition or things like that so I'm just my hat is off to every single person who can arrange this yes I am so grateful for our arrangers and they, they they are so enthusiastic about it like I expect myself to be enthusiastic about it because you know I'm the president I'm a choir member I, I this this is my baby right um, but I, I I love that other people are this excited about it but I never expect anyone to like, you know, <laughs> I don't expect everyone to, to feel the way I do but they do they feel so strongly for for everything that we do, and it's just I'm so grateful. Uh, I might die again. You need to heal again. Yeah. You very very badly need I to heal. I know. <laughs> no, no, our our heroes' names are Poot, Hat, and Potato. Ah. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, no no no. Ah. Now you're good. Yeah yeah goodbye goodbye everybody. And this is why we saved you. <laughs> Would you like me to play through it? No. Okay. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Alright, let's load the right. I like it how when you use flame, the shadows of the characters are based on where the flame is. That's cool. Uh, the, the glory of PlayStation 1. Right. The glory, glory, glory. Alright, so we were here, I think? Nope. Go use the, uh... Okay, I can just go... Go use your drop off. Okay. WM has come a very, very. WM has come a very long way, and I, I am just filled with gratitude for everyone. Uh, 
Uh, Karaka, we're actually planning on doing just that for our Ori stream, so don't worry. We have queued up games as best we can to feature the pieces that we're talking about. But yes, in this um, particular game, it was a little hard to choose because Into the Wilderness is the opening title, and uh, Porte is the final boss. So <laughs> we got a little bit caught between a rock and a hard place, but don't worry, that's absolutely on our minds for future streams. Yeah, and with Mass Effect, you've got the title screen thing exactly. going on, too. <laughs> but, uh... uh Yes, for the ones that, that are able to do that easily, I look forward to, to watching those streams myself. Because that music is so good. Alright, let's try this again. Flame. Burke. Three books at once? Holy moly. Yep, uh, Cecilia's is, is arguably the most difficult. Well, Brassider and Reth, you actually bring up a good segue. We actually have an open house coming up in a couple weeks on February 13th at Rockville High School. So if you would like to come check us out and perform for an evening, if you're an instrumentalist, if you are a singer, or you just want to come by and listen and see what we're all about, we would love to have you. We will miss you very much, Brassider and Rex. But I hope that you will come to our concerts, too, coming up on April 8th. If you want to type exclamation, exclamation point concert, that's our date and link to get tickets as well. Uh, heal. Let's heal, yeah. <laughs> so let's do that. You can either use heal or you can uh, use a heal base. Oh, oh. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I smacked the junk out of that book. Yeah, rehearsing is, uh, I love the open house because it, it gives people a chance who can't join us that season or, you know, they're, they've just got too much going on to come check us out. But it also gives people who are kind of unsure, like, is this something I really want to be in? <coughs> it gives them a, the opportunity to come see what a regular rehearsal with us is like. Oh, the, um, the open house rehearsal is going to be at Wooten. Sorry, I think I missed up there. Correct. We'll be at Wooten. But the concert is Rockville High School. I need to make an event for the open house on the website. <laughs> I'm currently acting as the president and the acting IT director. So, do you I get find to do that, that. Uh, obviously it's a as much of a challenge? But it seems like the orchestra itself, we all wear very many hats. We do, yeah. and and it's it's funny too because I I knew that the board, the the five five or six founding members, we knew we were going to be wearing a lot of hats. But I didn't expect all of us to be wearing as many hats as we still do, only because the amount of work has just grown so much. We have an administration of appointed administrators that's up to like 15 now. Tracy is one of them as our, our <laughs> you know, director of Twitch operations, which <laughs> is not an official <laughs> title yet, but she has an email account, so that counts. Good times, good times. Um, We've got people working with the library, we've got an ensemble manager who helps who helps Nigel run all of the sections and deal with all the announcements for each rehearsal. We've got the PR director, the PR team really, because it's the PR director and the assistant PR director, and they are amazing. They are doing a fantastic job, so shout out to you guys. Um, oh man. Pew! No, what else do we have? we've got so many administrators now, and it's just—it's wonderful. It's so heartwarming, even when it's really frustrating that there's so much work. It's heartwarming that we have it because uh, it means that we're doing something right. Oh sure, yeah. You probably no. survive this, but you okay. won't survive another attack. You are correct, so well. But with this counterattack and my flame. Now you can heal. Darn. Oh, Cecilia's my favorite. She's the only one who has two different end battle sequences. Alright. The first one is to do that, and the second one is for her to do this. <laughs> well, I like you do. Her little dance. And it's totally it's random very... when it happens, so. Pretty, uh, so, carrot is for an MP. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Alright, so before I found a book and I threw it in the fire. I guess there's a third book I also have to throw. Correct. The, okay, because that was... I think it's all the way on the... So there's that one. Yes, there's one up there. And then there's one all the way, I think, to the left or right of the cool, wall. Cool, cool, Towards the beginning or so. So... Let's go back over here. Bring it on, books and goblins. I've got fire magic. And a big stick. Does anybody watching stream have any questions about, well, anything, really? Sure, yeah, we'd love to answer any questions you've got about just the score itself, about the orchestra. Let us know. Game. Or the game. I can answer questions about the game, too. <laughs> Well done. When Yay. it flashes white, that's oh, how okay, you know that that's dead. their weakness. I. Okay. No, when they turn into multicolored Doritos, that's when you know they're dead. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I. So, would multicolored Doritos be like cake batter flavored? Because that would be really gross. Right? <laughs> no, I just figured it was just different colored corn chips. <laughs> oh, that's right. I got a headband before. Yeah, you Let can me put, put that it guy on. Vest. Also, heal. Thank you for the reminder. I usually get really annoyed with Chris whenever he's like, we're playing, because we, we tend to play a lot of single player games yeah, together. Yeah. Right, so, right. Uh, uh, I don't know, it's, a, it's like a bonding activity. Oh, no, I, you I, know? I, so, um, I am of the, the people who enjoy watching other people play video games. Game spectator. For the long time, I felt like the only one. <laughs> oh, no, God, no. My, uh, my, a friend of mine, my friend Hugh, was like, oh, so you're, you're a game spectator. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a really good way to That's a good it. way. That's, ex that's <laughs> totally descriptive. Um, I always get annoyed with him when he's like, heal, heal, heal. And I'm like, I know, shut up. <laughs> Let me play. Let me play. But he's right more often than not. So. Yeah, I think a, a lot of people, especially if you grew up with siblings, uh, you either had to, to, to take, you had to pick really. Mm -hmm. Whether you wanted to be involved or just be annoyed with them. And I decided, so <laughs> most of the time I was involved by watching my brothers play. Um, this was one of the ones when we were a little bit older, I got uh -huh. to be involved. So gotcha. my mother watched us play this game our whole, you know, childhood since it came out. We were like eight when it came out. Mm -hmm. And my mother didn't know until like two years ago that this game was not multiplayer. <laughs> because the three of us would sit there and play it oh. together. And we even had it, so if you plug in a second controller, right, right. you can both control the main character. Oh, but like, so great. if you're going in opposite directions, it, they'll just sit there, you know? Because you can't go in two dark directions. <laughs> but my mother found out, we were like, it's a single player game. And she was like, what? Then what? What the hell were you, th the three of you, doing the whole time? We were like, we we're just playing together. We were just, you know, playing, <laughs> playing together. Because she grew up playing, like, Mario 3, where, right, you know, right. when it's two player, it's actually two players. Sure, two people sure. are sitting in front of the game playing it. They're both playing. She had, like, pr she practically had a meltdown. It was <laughs> hilarious. I love it. But yeah. Boom! Then you've got other games where, like, I, I thought they were so good at the Metroid game. <laughs> right, Super Metroid. I thought they were awesome because they looked so good at it. I thought they were like experts at Super Metroid. <laughs> right, teenagehood comes around, and I finally play Super Metroid by myself. Well, I, my ex helped me get through it, but I, I played it on my own, and I beat it. And I sent a message to my brothers, and I'm like, "Guys, you'd be so proud of me! I beat Super Metroid!" And they both went. How? <laughs> How'd you do it? And I was like, what do you mean? Oh, man. So you are diseased, which means oh. you're going to need to use the medicine. Oops. Okay. Not the whole thing. Uh, when you're diseased, know. it means you can't heal. Oh. Which is right. what happened a while ago. You used uh, heal oh. berry, but you were diseased ahead of time. But so I was didn't. green. Yeah. Mm. So the door opens, so now okay. you can go downstairs. Let's have a heal berry for, for good luck. I'm a little buffer now. Also... Oh, yeah. Well, bless your heart. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't want them to have to watch it six times. Yeah, three is enough. Three is enough. Yeah, I agree. Single-player games are great with others because it's like you all get to share an experience that is still slightly different than if you play it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, 
Undertale is going to be a great game to stream when you talk about that. We were watching, me and my boyfriend did a, a pure pacifist run with Undertale, mm -hmm. and then we were watching another friend play it recently, and we were like, ah! Because they weren't, they were playing a neutral run, and we were like, no! <laughs> but everybody gets to have different experiences. Oh, this is, this is a spooky book. A sp spooky, spooky hole that has opened in the ground. Hey, buddy. You're not a guardian. You're not a guardian at all. Oh, hold You're on. You're the book monster. Oh, hold on. Let's go touch the forbidden book. Oh, uh, hey. Okay. Hey. You're not the shadow that calls me, are you? You dimwit, girl. I swear. Uh... Oh, yeah. So next week, our game is going to be Undertale. We're probably not going to get to the end of it, but definitely play it if you haven't. It is. It's something else. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you'll have to finish it next week. <laughs> Do it. I, I did a physical attack by accident. That's okay. Oh, th that hand is bigger than my face. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, um, so, uh, uh, hit O. Now go down. Oh, oh, so, Ooh. so wait, 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 don't, don't get too excited yet. <laughs> this is going to be useless to you right now. Okay. I, I couldn't remember which one came first, but later on you get one yes. that lets you summon. Neat! And if you had that, I was going to say use it, but okay. I, you don't get it in this battle. Sorry. <laughs> How about flame? How about flame? So I had a theory that's that's related to, to game music um, that I want to know some people's thoughts on. When it has kind of a sad beginning, so sorry and bear with me. When my grandfather was passing away, I unexpectedly found myself listening to town music a lot. <laughs> because, and I didn't know why, but every time the town, because, you know, I have this soundtrack for this, every time the, the town music for this game would come on, I'd always feel a little calmer, a little more grounded, you know, more comfortable. And I started to realize it's because, especially w with this game, not with every game, but with this game, uh, the town music was a like a symbol of safety mm. right oh i'm in a town i made it out of the overworld i'm like down yes. to one health and all my characters are uh, otherwise dead i can go to the inn and i can save and i can stock up like it was rest a, we can yeah, yeah it was very much a sanctuary to sure. to recover so you know when when i was going through some really hard times with that listening to town music made me feel much more calm and comfortable and I was wondering if that was true for anybody else. If anybody else listens to town music like that from games where towns are like that and kind of just feels very at ease. Because I, I, I know comparatively when I hear boss battle music, I get very anxious. <laughs> get pumped up. I, you know, I think the first one that came to mind was Kakariko Village. Only yeah. Only because it does have a kind of a wistful feel to it as well. A, um, like a hop homey feel, yeah. I guess you could say, and having its own sort of mournful statement of the melody, the woo, yeah. that, in a way, I, I think I would agree with that is, it's definitely a sense of just, you know, relax a little while, break in the tension. Okay, so I hear, oh, that felt a little spicy. No! No! Oh. Yeah, yeah. Look at that look of determination. <laughs> I say, yeah, heal. Oh, let's see. Heal good, first, good idea. then attack. Okay. I guess as in a town theme, in, in this game as well, there's absolutely, like, a, the time signature is much slower, the, um, it's not deliberately trying to get you excited or tense or anxious. Yeah, it's like, uh, here's a little slice of life music. You <laughs> yeah. know? Here's where people live peacefully. You know. However, um, to talk about another arrangement that, that some, someone did for us, it was Town Pictures at an Exhibition mm. by Tyler? Right? Yes. Um, and uh, one, two of the town pieces that were featured in that were um, Good job! You oh, did yeah. it! We did it! Um, 
Yeah, two of the, the town pieces, one was Zozo from Final Fantasy VI, which is a town of thieves and is in no way whatsoever relaxing or comfort comforting. <laughs> uh, Zainab and I both had the same... See, look, she's dancing! Zainab and I both had the same reaction, <laughs> which was, oh god, my heartbeat has increased already because... This this music is only associated with being afraid of dying again. Sure, sure. Um, and then the last one was the burning of Nebelheim in um, Final Fantasy VII. Yes. So you know that's not happy. No, no. Yeah, there are some very obvious exceptions, of yeah. course, but but this game goes with the same, I guess, mood that most town music tries to evoke, which is like you're safe, you're home. Yeah, Does that, exactly. Are there any departures to that later in the game? Um, I'm going to say no, only because in terms of the music, mm -hmm. uh, when those events occur, yes. the music changes. Sure, sure, sure. So it changes to being one of those times where you hear the music, and because it's different, you feel like, oh god, oh god. Right, right. But then when it becomes safe again, the music goes back to being mm. another town music, if not the same town mm -hmm. music. Welcome back, Potato. Now potato. you realize of the... Aldehyde! You know what? I don't care. Aldehyde family. The Aldehyde family <laughs> should have the Guardian. The female hey. of the Aldehyde family. At it least it wasn't just <laughs> us. <laughs> oh, fun fact, I also, uh, when you get to the town of Aldehyde, um, if you have time, I think we only have about 15 minutes left. Yes. Um, when you get to the town of Aldehyde, there is a pub. This hey. game is where I learned what a pub was. <laughs> that would make your life easier. Potato. There are those who relate to the burden one's destiny brings. Walk proudly. You must travel your own path from now on. Let's go. Yep. Potato aldehyde. Potato Lynn aldehyde. Potato Lynn aldehyde. Space princess. Space princess. Sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other characters are, um, Poot. Poot Van Buris. <laughs> That's a name. That's a name. <laughs> and, um... Hat, Rough Knight. <laughs> it's like that character in Star Wars, Hat Solo. And I can't wait till you get to start naming other spells. Because <laughs> you get to name all of your spells. That's pretty great. <laughs> the Innocent One, who the Guardians speak of. Dot, dot, dot. It may be too heavy of a burden for the sorcerers of the ultimate power. At such a young age, dot dot dot. Eh, we got this. Okay, so keep playing her. Okay. Go to Al go to Aldehyde. Yes. And then switch over to Rudy and okay. go to Aldehyde. Gotcha. All right, so we'll be all in the same place. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Let's go. So am I heading over across this bridge? Yep. Uh, More. yes. We're definitely taking questions. If you've got one, please type it in chat, and we'll, we'll take a look. Name of one of the best spells, Man Cannon. Don't worry. we It's already pretty close. I don't know if we can have too many cannons. What do you think? I'm thinking of a of which spell would work for that. I have one in mind. <laughs> it is a pretty good spell, too. It's kind of expensive, <laughs> though, from a mana perspective. Gotcha, gotcha. So you, you get like micro level ups throughout the, the game, it looks like, and then like actual level ups later. No, so course level up. Remember that? <laughs> remember that screen I showed you where you can use Mystic? Yeah. yeah. It's um, oh. it's four levels of force that you obtain throughout uh, the understand. battle. Okay. And then it resets every battle. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, I think. With yeah. Cecilia, you get Mystic, which allows you to uh, to use some property of an item. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you use a Heal Berry, if you use a Heal Berry through Mystic, then it heals everybody with a mm -hmm. little bit of the Heal Berry, but it diminishes the uh, potency of it. I see, I see. So you heal everybody a little bit. Um, and then if you, you get Summon, I think you have summoned now, in fact. I think that's what you got from the, the gotcha. turtle. Um, then you get a double spell mm -hmm. one, and then you get a high summon. 
So in order to use a high summon, yes. you have to like wait and bide your time in a battle until your force goes up enough to use a high summon in the battle. Which becomes super useful later. Neat. They all have their own things, but that's what that is. And then you level up like normal. So RD Major asks, are there do you have any thoughts on what makes a piece work better for a small ensemble versus full orchestra? Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> well, I do know that, at least for some pieces, it's all about mood. And when you have a song that... Oh, here, hand cannon. Hope that's close enough. <laughs> when you have a song that in its original appearance in a game maybe was just one singer and a guitar, then to in keep that same spirit, you would also want to keep roughly the same instrumentation. So, like, for example, Build That Wall is singer and guitar. If we wanted to, we absolutely could expand that to full orchestra. We could add more parts. We could, you know, maybe add a longer section. But would that really be in the spirit of the original piece of the game? Because I think, um, I, I'm not an arranger myself, but I do a lot of small ensemble performances, and the biggest challenge is really to, how can I take this feeling and emotion from the game itself that is, you know, sometimes very specific to that context, and give it to an audience who may not have already played that. And with small ensemble, it's a lot easier to do that because it is a more intimate setting. It is a more, there's less overwhelming sometimes when you have a full orchestral piece and, you know, it's blasting mass effect at you and you're not really sure where to look and it's just, sometimes it can be a sensory overload. But when it is a smaller group of people, you get a much more closeness to it and a more of a little more intensity, so to speak. A really good example of the opposite of that is um, uh, Jamin's piece, Millennial Fair. Mm -hmm. The Chrono Trigger festival that you go to is like the very first thing you do in Chrono Trigger is you go to this fair, and it's got this cute little renaissance -y little, you know, da -da 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 and it's just like, I think it's like two instruments, two or three instruments in, in game. With right? a little shaky yeah, tambourine Yeah, with a little, sound. like, you know, <laughs> shaky tambourine. Mm -hmm. Um, so now you, you have all your characters together. Jamin took it and made it um, a full orchestra piece. However, he did forget to put in the uh, the choir. Uh, there's, a, there's a line in there that goes, huh, <laughs> in rhythm, and he forgot about it. So a bunch of people in the audience did it, which was hilarious. Go talk to Emma. Yes. Go up behind the inn. Up behind the inn. Into the house behind the inn. Up behind the inn. Yeah. Right. That one. That one. Okay. That one. That one. That one. That one. <laughs> you go up the stairs. Up the stairs. Yeah. I would never have found the woman I Okay. Listen to that commotion. I wonder what's happening. There you go. You have triggered the next event. Oh no! So he managed to full pull the feel of that song, which is supposed to be a jovial little, you know, a little festival piece, and he made it big and joyous and grandiose and it builds up and builds up and it never loses the feel mm -hmm. of being at a festival it just feels like the festival has increased by a thousand right? <laughs> he did such a good job with that but then you get other pieces like um actually yeah. another one that comes to mind for kind of the, the flipping so to speak that mm -hmm. starts small and then it's made big is um in the symphony of the goddesses the song of storms yes which in the game is this Exceptionally annoying. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's like two instruments total. It's, da, 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 yeah. da, over and over and over again. It's meant to be an accordion, you know, it's meant yeah. to be just this like guy cranking out a music box. We ha also have, again, with a little tambourine in the background, but um, the interpretation of that in Symphony of the Goddesses included full orchestra and it just it changed them. the tone immensely. And yet, it's still kept within the spirit of Zelda itself. Just, you know, this uh, epic adventure and this just... You, you are... Sorry. <laughs> you are calling upon, you know, the heavens themselves to reign for you at your command with your magical ocarina. So yep. it was... 
it was really interesting to hear that because, I mean, I guess we could do Song of Storms with just an accordion if we really wanted to, but would that really capture the spirit of the game? And I don't quite think it would. Yeah, no. Then you could do you could do the one that they did in Smash Brothers, which is a metal cover of the Song of Storms. <laughs> yeah. Or a metal cover of Fountain of Dreams from Kirby's Dreamland. Like, it's 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 actually not as hard as it seems to pull a lot out of a a small piece as long as you know the emotional impact you're going for or the the atmosphere impact you're going for so with song of storms there's not really any emotion involved in it but it's more like you're trying to evoke a, a song that will cause rain right a storm right so you need to wh whatever you can do using the the music and melodies and harmonies you've mm -hmm. got to call in a storm Call it a storm. Go nuts. <laughs> um, I right. think pieces that are, have a small ensemble feel are ones that you really want to be more intimate. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it boils down to. I guess I could throw around some boxes. <coughs> oh, just as we're about to actually start the game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're gonna probably have to wrap it up get soon. To, get to do the so. very first thing, all three of the characters <laughs> together, and we could get, get done. That's all right. Oh, maybe we will play didn't, again another time. Didn't even really get to see the demons. Yes. But in true JRPG pa fashion, it takes a little while to get you out of the... You're the enemy? Oh, you're the enemy! Oh, yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going this way. This looks important, so am I on the right track? I okay. had castle. Oh, so it is. Oh, my this screen's changing pretty wacky. Ooh, okay. fun fact. So you talk to, talk to him, right? He's the king. Okay. Then switch to Cecilia and talk to him again. Oh, really? <laughs> Can I do that in... Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, see. Cool. Hey, bro. Sorry, please wait a moment. <gasps> I'm back, father! No one recognizes me! <laughs> you don't mind! <laughs> Dad, I don't want you to make a big deal. You never like crowds. I remember that. Look how you've grown! Okay. Secret potato. That's all right. That is really cool. Alright, is there anybody else that I talked to? Mm, no, not really. You can just go to Lilithia's tome if you want to. Okie dokie. Or you can buy armor. That sounds like That's a plan. in the building to the left of the inn. Okay, let's head back down, get some armor. The other way. Assuming you have some. I, I think I got some dollars. Some dollars. Some dollars. Oh, the Galea, or that is the, the currency in this game. <laughs> I love how it just got shortened to G. G. <laughs> Later on. G. Sup, bruh? Ruins to the north. Said to be the palace of the gods. I feel I should do something, but what? I don't know, man. Well, you look unhappy. Oh, yeah, I love that this town has a mayor and a king. <laughs> I never figured that one out. <laughs> well, the mayor runs the town, and the king is in the castle gardening. Gardening? Yes. He's... He's, he's great. He's really good at it. His name is Emergency. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought his name was Emergency. <laughs> Secret, Secret Potato. potato. <laughs> Not a bad band name. There, uh, there is a game store chain in Japan called Super Potato, so that's pretty close, I guess. Speaking of uh, 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 band names in Japan, I, I managed to find a Japanese pen pal who speaks German. Um, wow. Uh, long story short, she's a student in my best friend's, one of my best okay. friend's conversation classes, That's so it's not cool. completely random, but um, she wanted to practice her German, so we became pen pals, and I, I said that phrase, I was like, oh, we can be pen pals, and she's like, do you mean the Japanese band Pen Pals? And I'm like, the what? <laughs> Apparently there's a Japanese band named Pen Pals. Now you know. That's pretty cool. Uh, I told her all about how my favorite composers are Michiko Noruke and Nobuo Omatsu, mm -hmm. and I haven't heard back from her yet, but I'm hoping she finds that interesting. That'd be cool. I got to write her a very boring letter about how I had a board meeting for like three hours that day. <laughs> Is this the armor? Or am I no. Talking? No, okay. Well, that, oh, that's the yeah. arm shop? If oh, you go upstairs okay. and talk to the guy who's upstairs yes. with Rudy, um, he can upgrade your arm. Oh, but it's okay. very expensive. Gotcha, gotcha. So maybe not there right now. Yeah. The armory. Arm. It stands for something. I don't remember what it is, but now uh, I really want to know. Awesome robot man. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think we are just about at time, so the adventure will continue in our hearts and minds.
So, I uh, suggest yeah, so a um, quick recap. We have a concert coming up on April 8th. If you're in the DC area, we would love to see you there. It will be at Rockville High School. And before then, in just a few weeks, our first open house of the season is on February 13th at Wooten High School. Feel free to check us out at WMGSO.org to RSVP. If you're a singer, if you're an instrumentalist, just want to come hang out, we would be delighted to have you. And with that, thanks so much for tuning in. Next mm -hmm. week is going to be Undertale. Thanks again, Ayla, for stopping by. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. It stands for Advanced Relic Machine. <laughs>